as well. We've still got Brutal Fissure versus YCTG here as the standings starting to shape up pretty similar to what it is over on the Xbox side of things here in Europe. X Gaming take the 2 1 0 2 for Zimmerframe and OTP, meaning we still have that 4 0 team. Flashpoint remain that 4 0 team here as well. Brutal Fissure and YCTG will be up next. What do you think that stands for? I'd see TG. I feel like at this and point. And I know I was looking at the logo us. like it was going to mean something, but I was like, yeah, it's just <laughs> it's a, a bird. It's a Joe Bro joint. It's probably unrelated. It's just whatever he felt like making. My eyes here are really on Brutal Fisher because they've got a bunch of players, again, that are a little bit newer teams that we haven't, or players that we haven't seen in the past in the PCL or the PCS when it was the series. Mm hmm. And they've been impressive. Yeah, they've been good. But it's just coming up in that fact that the two losses they have are up against, I think, the top two teams, one from Flashpoint last week, Ooh. where that one was, I think, a little bit more disappointing of a loss. The old pass, man. Let's go. Those don't happen often. No, that's like a G2 thing. And uh, I think they were playing against the Renegades when that was actually happening. YCTG will do what... They'll for take a it team a, that's number four. They'll take it a step <laughs> further. I don't mind. I don't care. I don't mind it at this point. I'll let you do you. They got nothing to lose here. They're going for some serious strats. They do not ban a champion. They say, let it all through. Let it all hang out. Let's see what the boys can do with everything available. They will grab Bomb King Makoa as their first two selections. Brutal Fissure will grab Khan. And the, and, and the double... Uh, pass ban is just something you don't count for, straight up. And it's in that area, and it's exactly what happens, right? We can grab Khan. Cool, he's open. You didn't ban him. All right, we're going to grab Makoa. It's in that same vein as Makoa do BK, we ban yeah. Khan and Makoa, or do we let them both through so that even though you get one, we get the other? Well, I'll take one. You take the other now. Furia, Tyra, Makoa, Bomb King. A lot of damage here. On this YCTG lineup, Grover will be the support of choice for Brutal Fissure. And the final pick will be Kinesa. I'm surprised that I didn't see them go for a Drogas. I feel like Drogas has definitely been the one that like would be hey, not only Fissure? good for this map, but being able to, uh, I mean, just feel confident in their lineup that they have right now, as well as the player Atomic AMK, I believe, being able to come through. So something that I think I've seen them... I, I want to say rely on. Maybe that's part of the reason as well. Is they're not going to be leaning on it as much. It's not the crutch yeah. that it has been in the past. Well, on paper, I think I like YCTG's lineup here. The double pass ban. I don't think we've ever New we've meta. seen. We've seen G2 pass one ban. I don't think we've ever seen them pass both bans. Uh, but guys, let us know who you think is going to take this one here. A very bold strategy from the bottom team <laughs> over here in Europe's PS4 region. We'll have to see if it pays off. It's... Bold risky. strategy, Cotton. Yeah, was, that's exactly what I was thinking when you said that. It's just it is incredibly risky, but at the same time it can pay off because you do get Makoa. You give up Khan, which is more of a team-dependent thing, I think, than anything. Some teams can make Khan the worst person to have to deal with, and yeah. others, he doesn't even have an impact. So I'm kind of curious, Sir Benji, can you stand up to it? Will it be enough, or are you going to get taken down like it's nothing? And I think the way that that Atomic plays around, or maybe a, a Brutal Fissure playing together is the better way to say that. Because Adam, Atomic has been, you know, the most impressive, I think, player on this team. Probably the most impressive rookie in the console scene in terms of just a brand new name that I haven't seen before. Playing around this con here is going to be important for him. He needs to be close enough, though, to receive that firing line buff here. But maybe they're just trying to play passive and just let the Sonara do her thing. I mean, so far so good. 39% without any contest is pretty clean. And yeah, you're getting some Bomb King bombs thrown at you. You lose AMK, but is it really going to be enough if you can get 51% by the time anyone comes back to the point? You're going to be able to regroup and push right back in. Well, 51% despite losing that first pick here. And the big thing is that YCTG, they don't take the high ground. They don't take it at all. They don't put any pressure or force uh, Brutal Fisher to have to fight again to grab it. The Solar Blessing is beautiful there. Beanie able to get the full reset on his HP. Commander's grabbed out from under his shield. This is what we're talking about when we talk about Brutal Fisher. The way that they play together around each other. We hear the Headhunter get popped. Commander's grab is used to peel the shield. 
And it's all gravy from there, baby. Beautiful execution there from Brutal Fissure. And you want to talk about counters. That's probably the most basic one you can have. As shield goes up, I stop your shield immediately. I can dash through it. I can grab you. I love it. And it sets it on cooldown. It's not the same. You know, you try to do that to Khan, even if someone is able to pick him up, it doesn't matter because he can just throw his shield right back up. It's specifically because Fernando has to wait for that, what, 15-second cooldown yep. to come up. Stupid it's long. so ridiculous to have to deal with. And for Colterra Scred, it doesn't matter if you have your ult or not. That is free headshots all day. I mean, 15, I think there's a couple of 18 second cooldowns, and I don't know them all off the top of my head, but fi you know, 15, 18 is, is right up there in terms of the longest cooldowns in the game. I think nine lives at base is the longest cooldown in the game. That's because it just, yeah. it literally just resets your whole kit. So that's, <laughs> so that's pretty good. Uh, <laughs> But it's, it's crazy. I mean, if you're able to counterplay Fernando's shield, the character feels a lot less effective. I mean, that is so much defensive utility, line of sight blocks that you're just not able to get, whether it's, you know, a, a nice little Makoa hook from the back or a commander's grab straight through or a stun up over the top. It is brutal fissure, baby, looking real good despite the double pass ban from YCTG. And this is the kind of performance I was missing last week. Granted, there's going to be a pretty big oh. difference between YCTG and Flashpoint, but this is solid from Brutal Fissure. This is part of the reason I think they have the potential. I mean, right now, the top three, at least that we've seen I mean, today in both, yeah. both Europe, the both top six teams in Europe, that's the best way to say it, have a really good chance at upsetting Vex, at upsetting Flashpoint. I think EU PS4 might be one of the more competitive regions at the moment here. Cyclone, Flashpoint, Brutal Fissure all looking extremely good. And YCTG not exactly out of it yet. They put up a nice little defense here just with one ultimate as well. So high value. It's all good, baby. Cute little pop from YCTG showcasing the movement. Part of the reason Bonking is really solid on this map is being able to keep up Ooh. with that, potentially knocking people off as well. At least gets the dash and the Whirlwind as well. That's Brutal Fissure, I think, pressing the gas pedal, trying to get aggressive, but Kultera Scred's getting zoned away. Yeah, he's uh, definitely zoned out here. Has to pop the Transporter, has to hit the Carbine, getting healed, but it's still not enough. Actually forced out into line of sight of Tyra. One more bomb would do it, but unable to find it there. Hamana Heino. Three, I'm surprised two, I nailed that on the first one. try there. That's quite the name. There's a lot of serious names in this uh, <laughs> in this matchup here. What was that other name I saw? Some of the U. Ernuxton. Oh, yeah. That's one I uh, I refuse to try and pronounce you because I know I'm going to get it wrong. You stay away. He's uh, playing Mr. Bomb King. Good old Patty's beanie, Sir Benji. Names I can uh, pronounce at a third grade level. <laughs> but Hamana Heino. Kultura Scred, Ernustigan. Like, I mean, you guys are pushing me to the limit here, brother. <laughs> Woo! A couple of good headshots here from Kultura. And this is like the best corner. This is one I had originally at one point started calling the carry corner because Cassie would go there, yeah. Leon would go there. And it's a good spot for Kinesa when you're aggressing or defending. No matter what, that's a very comfortable place to be because it divides attention. You're either looking at the payload or you're looking at the corner. Or if you're on the payload, you're having to turn your attention away from where you're trying to push to take care of someone who is just dealing so much damage from the back line. So it's a comfortable spot. It's a really good place to be able to play the map well. And if Kultura Scred can continue finding, finding spots like that and kills like that, then I think it's going to be a lot cleaner overall for Brutal Fissure in their next potential push. Well, next round of items starting to come out. The next team fight already beginning. First Blood probably not too far away now as the King Bomb rips through in that transporter. Oh my goodness, there's so much to talk about there, but the First Blood will fall the way of Inara and the turnaround kill there from Kultura now getting pressured out by Makoa. Just has to buy time for this transporter. And then the audacity just to ignore the problem in front of his face, the literal pink elephant in the room, or pink turtle in this case, just having the confidence that his team is going to bail him out, and they do. And honestly, that's one of the most difficult spots to be put in as a Kinesa is when they get aggressive. They have the ability to just funnel someone back there, whether it's Bomb King or Makoa. You get that little bit of pressure you need to force Kultura's Scred in this case to have to fall back or figure out how he's going to play it. You save a lot of time on the point, but even with all that, YCTG only get 27%. They don't have a huge amount of control, and they've used two ults so far. Now the third one's being popped. There's the end flame, and right as they lose Makoa as well, and Fernando, he's ha he has to back up. 
He's getting thrown around by Khan. There isn't a lot of effective damage coming out of this inflame. Ernustigan and Tyra, Pat, played by Patty's, able to bring it through at the last possible second. Kultura Scred, though. He's not done with you yet. Grenade launcher from distance could be the only way out of this kill. But Patty's is hunting here. He throws out a couple of the marks. Throws out both of his marks. Now he knows exactly where these players are. They're taking extra damage, and he knows exactly how they're approaching this fight. Those marks are good, and the vision's good. Except you put it on the two people who I think you have to be the least worried about running to the point. Right there, Hamana is the one you have to keep track of, but he's going to be able to burn it. That's going to be the big difference. 99 to 93, YCTG need to burn these front lines to make sure they can hold on. Oh my goodness, and Khan trying to hold on here. Here comes another King Bomb off the top rope. Doesn't have the battle shout to immune it out. Culture of Scred, the Beanie, Nasty Pro, everyone fighting tooth and nail on this objective. It's even Kinesa getting involved here, just trying to reset that over time one last time. Bomb King might lose his life for this zone, but at the end of the day, YCTG get what they came for. Nothing tells you you are in a worse off spot than when your Kinesa is forced on the point. And that's actually part of the reason that we started seeing less of the Sniper, specifically on this map, because even though she can move around a lot, even though she is very confident if you can hit those headshots, 2,400 damage is a ton yep. to be able to apply to anyone. Will one-shot pretty much most champions except for front lines. You lose that ability to have someone who can be impactful within you know 30 feet of the circle. You're going to be way too far away from the control point to feel as impactful. And let's say you're forced to dash in, you're really just a body that's trying to hold on to time. You're not doing a lot. Your damage from the carbine isn't going to be enough to make a big swing, a big chunk for your team. Well, Brutal Fisher holding the defense so far so good. ICTG out there definitely. Well, that's a nice, that's just a nice shot there. It really is. I mean, the sensitivity this guy looks like he's playing on here. Hitting some pretty good flicks, pretty good headshots across the board. And I'm not sure who to vote on here today. I mean, in almost every set we've seen so far today, there's been some type of upset, some type of conversation. Four threes, even in that 2-0 set with Flashpoint. Everything getting very competitive here as we are winding down in the last couple of weeks of the console league. And Tyra. Not someone who we've seen as much lately. And I feel Tyra. like that has been in this this area. I mean, we've seen a lot of upsets. We've seen some champions come through. YCTG with the, the double pass strat. This is the uh, more Mom. interesting week of console than I think we've gotten in a while, just because it's nice to see these top teams have someone nipping at their heels at least a little bit, looking like they can take them oh. down. And if we can get a couple more, uh, not necessarily deaths of the top teams, but just, you know, maybe a knockout, it'd be pretty interesting. Absolutely, I'm always down for an underdog story to come out on top, and I think I'm uh, I think I'm glad I, I sold my stock in Tyra. I don't think her value is going to be increasing much more this season. Nope. Big solar blessing there. A lot of people huddle under that, and that'll give YCTG the health they need to try and push this one. Try and get it going. Makoa almost dredge anchors Khan off the map, but you know, the means to an end are all the same here when it's all said and done. Sir Benji falls either way. 4, 3, 2, 1 goes the countdown. And Ernustigan able to stay alive just barely on the high ground to keep this push alive. He has like his 19th King Bomb of this game available to him now if he wants to pop it. Fighting desperately to maintain control of this high ground. And I say just do it. Perfect angle. He's getting aggressive. Press the gas pedal. Get in their face. What are they going to do? You're Bomb King. Show them the reason Beautiful. that you were crowned at the top. Beautiful. I mean, if you need to, King Bomb, he's been charging it up fast enough. Almost got oh. a kill. If he had done another bomb there, that would have been an easy clap. Oh my goodness. Now, if he could just rotate up to the high ground or maybe even... Oh, I don't really need the King Bomb, and it's always a risk to pop it against Khan when the battle shout is a factor. But look at this. Zin coming down off the high ground. They get the front line killed before the Whirlwind can fully ramp up, and that might be the difference. I mean, it's just collapse here on the defense. It's just a constant chain reaction of kills coming through. you got to put the foot down. you got to get this one through, though, before you allow Brutal Fissure to stabilize. This is your moment, YCTG. And now double front lines. They get rid of one, but the other one's right back up and with Grover behind them, and they finally get rid of Bomb King. I think that's going to make a big difference, but Makoa, Ancient Rage, pops, swinging as hard as he can, tries to get a kill, but Zin. Are you kidding and me, And this dude? is what he does so well. He just buys time. Look at this. It's overtime for so much longer. Oh. Someone's going to be able to get oh, down. Oh, they got it through. YCTG go up 3-1. to one. Holy crap, though. What a fight that ended up being, and it all started... 
with this right here, gets that kill. Gets this kill with just the skin of his teeth, though, stays alive. Gets the big heal from Furia right at the critical moment there. Stays alive. Zin's pressure's not enough. And then he goes on to win that boxing match with Khan and then kills Grover. And then he almost killed that Kinesa with that fadeaway Grumpy Ball, uh, Grumpy Bomb, and stick to the wall there. That was really, really, uh, actually pretty close. If his name was a little bit more like Ball and Barry, it'd be much easier to say and remember Ernest for again. this Bomb King repetition. It has been you just gotta do it. phenomenal. And now he gets to keep that King Bomb. That's the other big thing about that round is all of that damage was just in hand. That was just him playing a really good Bomb King. And now with that ult available, that can swing things so heavily in your favor. If you're looking to try and end a game, this is the best way to do it. Oh, wow, and a really nicely placed King Bomb. But Inara with the peel, I mean, she throws up the CC immunity, walls off. The pressure onto Grover as well. Loses her life for it, but that is, uh, you know, the frontline sacrifice incarnate there. Ernest again manages to stay alive. Tries to pass the through the doorway, but you step into the line of sight of Kultura Scred this game, you're likely to be taking a shot to the face. I mean, he has been phenomenal on this Kinesa. And as of right now, he needs to be the one making the difference. Get rid of this Tyra, get a headshot, just eliminate someone big right now. You gain not only point control, but you swing this way more in favor of Brutal Fissure. Even with comeback mechanic, I mean, they're just barely ahead of YCTG right now. Moving on to the high ground now. Here comes the inflame, but the wall off is going to keep a cap on most of this pressure coming through. And Nara will still fall. Beanie. On the Fernando, the effectiveness this man has been able to find. The Immortal is still available as well. He can just use that effectively here. YCTG, they have the ultimates to kind of go the distance. Crossfire as well. If Tyra can find a nice little spot to use that in, and with everyone having to get on the objective here in the next couple seconds, I feel like it might be time. Immortal pops. You have your Makoa there ready to be able to go, but only 66% on that Ancient Rage. That's not going to be enough to get it around any team near this in 96 oh, to 97, man. just trying to hold on as best they can. I mean, that's the Solar Blessing missing, Double but kill? it's Beanie. Beanie's still alive. Are you kidding me? He gets the heal there. Kultura Scred takes him down, but Beanie on this Fernando has undoubtedly for me been the MVP on the side of YCTG. Great heals from Furia, though. You have to mention it. Overtime starting to expire here. The dredge anchors are landing. The damage comes through, and Tyra doesn't even need to use her ultimate. I think that's a mistake when it's all said and done, but she doesn't need to at the end of the day. And YCTG, with their double pass span strategy, they it managed worked. to take game one. It did work, Cotton. It paid off. The new meta. Now yeah. we're going to see all teams double pass. No one gets banned anymore. Except, yeah. or better yet, we'll know, start man. seeing Lex Sky. Who was it? Lex Sky, Shaolin, and Maeve. Those no, will be right. the four bands every single game. Where I mean, it's Maeve like, no one's going to play them. Maeve used to be a thing. It's console. that weird, I think, execute coming through where it's just like, if you miss that pounce, you miss everything. Like, your whole job as Maeve at that point is just down the toilet. Well, Brutal Fissure, they go down early in this set. Ice Mines is going to be map number two. And. Was that YCTG's map? That did not feel... Okay, we, we have a lot of things we say, oh, well, it, what, it was a 3-0, but it doesn't really feel... That did not feel like a 4-1. You know what I no, mean? No, that was way For YCTG. Closer. Brutal Fissure, that was their map pick. This is YCTG's map pick. If they can just lock it down where they apparently feel most comfortable on Ice Mines, I mean, this could be a quick 2-0 a little upset. I like seeing Koga. I feel like that's a console thing right now is Koga being banned out whenever he's looking somewhere that he could be potentially strong, but this is just one of those things where I'm, from that splice set, after seeing what Koga can do on this map, I do not want to see him come through if you're playing against a team you think has the potential to make it right. look that good. I feel like YCTG, especially being able to say, hey, this is our map pick, Brutal Fisher play that appropriately, just making sure that's gone. Well, Fernando Bomb King will be the selection here. I, I mean, it's all of the, all the guys that have stuff that will block off the entire entrance to this Ice Mines point. You've got the Fire Spit, the Fireball, the Grumpy Bombs, and just the Bomb King pressure right now. It's very strong for both teams here. I think these drafts are going very well for both sides. The Furia is a great way to keep it going here. And if things keep up like this, it's just going to come down to in-game execution. Solid draft so far from Brutal Fissure. But I will say Tyra, again, is the one that leaves me yeah, wondering. Yeah, they, they didn't do great with it. And I'm just looking at that as one that might not make the big difference. Might end up being the huge swing factor that can burn down Mako and Anara fast enough 
But Leon, you have the anti-heal there. You have Drogos with a lot of burst. Grover, who has been favored a lot today, is going to be able to bring so much in terms of healing as long as he can come through. Whirlwind at the right time can make a big difference on Ice Mines. I think that this is the only time I believe I've seen Leon today and picked Orban, right? She's been completely just glossed over. And I think it's a really good look for either squad that's going to take it. The anti-heal has been such an important conversation on PC. We'll have to see if it translates here in a console as well, guys. Get ready to cast your votes here in chat for who you think is going to take this one. On paper, I'm not really sure who I like more, to be honest with you. I think these are both fairly even matched, and it will come down to the players playing the game. There's a lot that can go right and a lot that can go wrong. Like, I'm looking at Tyra again. If you're able to burn down those front lines, then all of a sudden she's completely useful. If she yeah. doesn't get even just a moment like that, then you're relying very heavily on Bomb King. And what we saw last game, you can rely on Bomb King, but it has to be the right player. And like you said, I think a lot of this is going to be execution, blow for blow, punch for punch, every step of the way. Yeah. And as we load into game number two here on Ice Mines, it's YCTG, the bottom squad, looking for an upset onto the team above them in the standings. And they steal away the map pick. They do the hardest part of the job right out of the gate. That's the biggest thing. So if they can just lock it down here on their map pick, they can say that they've done it. On Ice Mines, I have gotten very confused now whether or not it is one that you need to, you know, sit down, get ready, grab your snacks, be prepared for, or if it's going to be a 4-0. Some teams have figured this map out relatively well, but the push is just so difficult that it does make the difference. You honestly, I think, have to just be head and shoulders above the team you're trying to play against in order to take it. But right now, YCTG are the favorites to be able to come through and win. Now the calm before the storm here. Everyone getting to their spots. Grenade launcher goes out across the map. But will not find a home here. Marked up, Drogos has been revealed to everyone on Tyra's squad. Atomic finds the first kill of the game. And this is something I forgot to talk about. It's Atomic on Bomb King, baby. I mean, this guy has been an absolute monstrosity with this champion. And the fact that he is here on his map pick on a map that's pretty damn good for Bomb King, I just don't know if I see a way out of this for YCTG, man. He is an absolute monster <laughs> on this character. And now being able to just get a couple kills at the very beginning. That's really all you need when you have a zone like this. You don't have to worry about wiping the team. Just push them back gradually the good old-fashioned way. And YCTG just going to have to watch patiently from their base as Brutal Fissure not only grab that point, but get a pretty good start to this game. I mean, as far as Ice Mines go, especially when it's not your map pick, this can be probably one of the most trudging maps to play on. Yep. Early ultimates here from Drogos. A lot of damage coming out of him, despite the kills not necessarily being there to back it up. Salva to the back line. Almost takes down Tyra, but she's getting a lot of healing, a lot of damage. What is the damage charts right now? I just, I got to see what this Drogos has been able to do. Jeez, Jeez man. 20... Pretty much 21,000 here in just under two minutes and 30 on the clock. It's a very quick ultimate out as well, but Sir Benji will shut it all down. The biggest, baddest bully this side of the Mississippi. It's Ash. And in control. But too. which side of the Mississippi? Country's inside of the Mississippi? In West Virginia? Or Zinia? We'll have to refer this to Evan on still, that one. I'm trying to, yeah, I was like, I'm looking at a map in my head and I think no matter where, <laughs> which side, like, I mean, this side of the Mississippi for us is also the West Virginia side. So maybe West Virginia going to come through. We actually got to see one, someone earlier running a Hideout 5. That's what, I didn't know Hideout 5, that's what West Virginia was. But <laughs> It I was mean. because SEA, and it, it, it happened here too, where Zen just never leaves. He's in Billow forever. <laughs> that was funny. And he was running no billow speed. So it was just this nice, slow, <laughs> cruising five-second billow. Burn. Yeah, the slow burn. And it looks like YCTG will be able to slow it on down here in round number one as well. Brutal Fisher. They get wiped. It's a big cooldown spent to do it. Ancient Rage is... Uh, it's. I'm never really upset when they pop that, right? Because it's almost like... All right, they use this, all right? It's it's going to happen. When they pop the Ancient Rage, they're going to win that fight unless they really screw up. So that's a great cooldown to just grab the last 30 seconds of the round here, something you don't have to fight against in the next round. But every team fight is very, very different in round number two because of the ultimates that are up and available. 
And a wise man once said, you don't draft to play Ice Mines, you just draft to fight on the point on Ice Mines. It doesn't matter what happens in between there or here, as long as you can win that one. And unfortunately, you're seeing, I want to say, the big issue, right? You get one ult, it's the Ancient Rage. You win one fight as YCTG. All you have to do is time it prop uh, properly, which is around like 40, 50 seconds here, and you're clean for the rest of the round. You don't have to worry about the rest of it. You don't have to set up. You don't have to use another ult. If you can get three, four members with just that one swing, it will shut down, in this case, Brutal Fissure like it's nothing. And they need to shut down Atomic AMK because he's 4-1-0, and oh, even though his damage isn't at the top of the charts like you're seeing out of this Drogos, who is 0-3. Oh you're still seeing him have an impact and being able to pick up a lot of these kills. Well, Drogos still uh, at the top of the charts, Five, but Ash and Atomic four, not far behind three, him. Two, and level 2 one. items starting to come out now. Ernustigan, despite all of his damage... Did not have enough credits to buy level 2 Cauterize, so he will have to leave base with those 600 in hand. It won't be in a good spot, but Drogos and Cauterize, not a big deal, especially when most people are running Follow the Scent anyway, I think. Right out of the gate. And Nara squeaks into the backline, Gore, stuns out too, and the damage is good. And Nara's still alive. The no wall way. actually saves her life. No I way. expected her to die. Patty's picks up a kill on AMK. That turns oh. everything around and no, Nara still dude. pushing through all of that. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. There was even somebody on, I can't remember who it was. I didn't really get a good look at it, but there was somebody on the objective that she was retreating into and she still lived. Patty's just looking for the dismounts here, but to be honest with you has kind of completely failed in that mission. <laughs> Everyone got right up to him. He got stuck on a barrel now. End flame, movement speed, damage. Patty's They've overstayed his welcome here. Immortal is going to come through, and it's just enough for YCTG to steal it away. The zone, I guess, was good enough. You had the inflame, but Immortal makes you move incredibly slow. It doesn't really matter if you have any movement buff on top of it. It's still going to be enough that YCTG can just kind of watch you walking at them aggressively, menacingly, but you're just walking at them at the end of the day. You're not able <laughs> to accomplish too much off of that. And, it was tail end, right? If that Immortal ends maybe just a second earlier, then yes, you see Overtime come through. Brutal Fissure have a fight on their hands. Maybe they can swing control back, but they lose it pretty much at the tail end, and now it's not a very comfortable look for this defense. Wow. A lot of damage comes through onto Atomic. He gets kind of blown up there. The shield drops. Solar Blessing is here. But so is the Salvo spit combination. Where will it go? Salvo rips to the back line, doesn't quite find what he was looking for, but at the end of the day, Ernustigan knows exactly the angle he wants to play, and what a nice sequence there, using the entirety of the kit outside of the ultimate to great effect there. Lands the salvo onto the support, thrusts up to the high ground to chase her down, but while I'm in while I'm in transit, why don't I land a couple of nice rockets onto Ash, so once I'm done cleaning up this Furia, I can grab the kill onto Ash easily as well. Now YCTG have taken up the high ground as well away from Brutal Fissure, although they're giving up the ground just as much as they're able to take it. Patty's kind of in that awkward song and dance of trying to fight a front line. It just doesn't usually go well for the one with less health. Yeah. And so as they have to fall back just a little bit, YCTG trying to figure out the best way to, to re-engage, get down, and push through this archway, which is probably the most difficult part of the push. Ooh, Salvo spit. Kind of awkward, but at the end of the day, it finds good damage. Furia forced to pop her inflame just to try and stay alive, just for those iframes. But the kills are still happening here. We'll have to see if this is enough here. Nustigan on a 13 streak. He's going to get stunned out by this Grumpy Bomb there, and that is a lot of effective time. Bot off the clock. King Bomb trying to scare away YCTG without committing too much himself. And he, he, can, he does just that, to be honest with you. Almost gets the Ancient Rage out. But at the end of the day, YCTG, they, that might be a blessing in disguise for them, because now... That's just a King Bomb traded out for nothing. That's a gamble that would have maybe paid off, but a gamble that won't even be taken when it's all said and done for YCTG. They go into the next round with probably every ultimate available now. That was incredibly close for Anara, but it's also the most unfortunate scenario that you could never have made it out of. You have Ash with knockbacks, Tyra with not only a firebomb, but also just her in-hand damage, and you're walking through a small corridor where they know you're going to be coming in, they know what you're trying to do, you live through that, then yeah. maybe you find some overtime. Maybe you can get some repeat performances of your kills earlier that round. But 2-2, two, two, pretty much the way Ice Mines is one to do. 15 seconds. 
Yeah, man. Drogos on Ice Mines. Drogos on Jaguar Falls. Pretty solid maps. For the greedy boy himself, 6, 4, and 7. Ahead by uh, almost a whopping 30,000 damage. Outside of that, though, the pack is, uh, is a fairly close race below him. Healing is extremely tight as well. About 1,500 or so separating these two healers. And level three offensive items starting to come through for both sides. Now it's a matter of who plays the fight better. And Ernustigan just gets spiked out of the sky by Tyra. Wow. Patty's has ult available. Not going to be able to pop it. Both the carries going down right there. That's going to make a big swing in favor of Brutal Fissure. Although Whirlwind going to be able to keep them at least present in the fight. There's going to be the assert dominance to get some immunity. But Sir Benji's kind of locked in the corner. He sure is. Still has his Ancient Rage. Use some ultimates here, guys. I mean, what are, are we going or are we not? So we don't use Dragon Punch. Then we do use Whirlwind. Then we don't use Ancient Rage. Then we do use Seismic Crash. Why CTG? They're, they're setting a different precedent with every single ultimate that comes through. That's a nice enlightenment. It's a counterplay, the King Bomb there. But it's Brutal Fissure already coming away with the, with the payload. I mean, that was so sloppy. You're looking at the counterplay, and it's like, like you said, Patty's does a phenomenal job getting rid of Atomic AMK, but good for you. Like, there's no real big award for it. Maybe, like, you push Brutal Fissure back. If you can hold them at this zone for two minutes, then that might make a big difference to me, but it's just kind of, it feels almost awkward. Of course, getting 50% back on your ult means he has a charge back up, so it's not the worst trade in the world, but it just feels, like you said, sloppy. It feels it's like the they came into this just not... What's the plan? Prepared for it. What's yeah. the plan? I mean, you have so many good ultimates to engage, to counter engage, and you just don't use any of it. Or you use half of it after the other half already hasn't been used. I just, I don't like when I see a very clear disconnect from one player to the next, where one guy, it's really just there on the front line. The Ancient Rage is not used right after the Whirlwind was used. And then after Makoa dies, then Inara Seismic crashes. It's like, what are we, what are we doing? Are we going, or are we, are we trying to back off here? I mean, it just makes no sense. As of now, Brutal Fissure finally back on the payload. I realize it hasn't moved at all. This has been a very solid defense from YCTG. If they get Seismic Crash back up, which 40% with a minute, that's plenty of time to be able to charge it through. You're going to be able to come to the next round, at least maybe with a better plan to use those ults. But you're looking at, again, 3-3, something that is typical on an Ice Mines. Unless Brutal Fissure in the next minute can change the way this game has been going all 12 minutes that it's been going. Yeah. Another brawl here on the corner right as the payload tries to turn. And another to Kimbe Matumbo. Absolute thunderous block here onto Atomic. He's not able make his way down in the firebomb looks like he might have to commit to this one but the heal from furia and then the wings of wrath connecting all the way down the hallway as well it's good stuff here patty's is has definitely been solid on the tyra <laughs> cultura knows he's got nowhere to go he's been separated from his team he is a lost wolf out there in the wild patty's might be getting a little over aggressive here but it's only 12 seconds left on the clock here. These rounds on Ice Mines go so fast, I'll tell you what. It, it like, definitely feels a lot quicker than it has in the past. Normally, it feels like I barely had time to complain about that team fight. <laughs> Normally 13 minutes in, I feel like we're still looking at a 2-2 slash line right now. This is where time can be added on this overtime push. That doesn't look that solid from Brutal Fissure, but they're going to be able to get aggressive at least a little bit. They're getting a lot of healing. They're applying a lot of damage, but it's kind of getting shrugged off by the other side. YCTG just pushing them back. And I mean, with Grover, look at... It, it's really Grover versus Solar Blessing right now. I mean, the amount of healing coming through from both of these clumped rosters is immeasurable. And at the moment, I mean, Grover is trying to struggle to fight his way back there. And right as the front line begins to fall, that's when the overtime timer will tick out. At the end of the day, both of those healers are extremely successful in those exact scenarios. But I feel like just the Drogos, like the fire spits over the top all the time for YCTG is why they end up winning that little skirmish. All right, 10 ultimate score. <laughs> it's time to dance. Who's popping what first? And... 
how often are you going to? Are you going to be timid? Are you going to pop one, then another a few seconds later, then another a few seconds later? Or are you going to be able to say, this is going to be seismic crash, ancient rage at the same time with a whirlwind to make sure everyone stays alive? Like yep. something that is going to come through with a combo from YCTG. Overall, I like that, though. I mean, slash lines aren't impressive. The only thing that's standing out is the fact that you have 45k damage ahead of anybody on the Drogos. But at the end of the day, that doesn't matter if it's not getting converted to kills or you're not using your ult. I want to see, I mean, especially on Ice Mines where the zoning can be so brutal. I think you need to take President in this fight. You need to be the one that sets the pace. You need to be the one that gets the first couple of kills. And right now, that is brutal fissure. They pop four ultimates in a row and get the two for nothing trade here. Get the objective control. They grab another kill as well. Drogos has nowhere to go. And look at this. Only one ultimate was used by YCTG. 51% down on the objective. They're being zoned. I don't know why they picked Ice Mines, because they have no idea what they're doing. Use it or lose it, and right now Ancient Rage, cool. It's not getting you anything. You walk at them again aggressively. You look menacing, but it doesn't really do much. That health bar goes down fast when you're not able to find anything in return. I don't say this often, but I mean, this was, this was trash from YCTG. I mean, they were looking so good in game number one, playing so well together, too. And then to come into this map, and play so poorly together and have the same problem happen two rounds in a row, it's just really weird for you to make that massive a scale of a mistake with yeah. your ultimates two rounds straight and end a game with ultimates still available to you. That's just a, that's a mistake. And it just feels like there was no communication, right? When I heard Seismic Crash come through, I swear I hear ults coming pop. But that's because Brutal Fissure are popping all of theirs. Seismic Crash is only doing so much. Brutal Fissure is gas pedaling. They know they can get a couple kills off of this, and they know they can immune it. So they're just going as aggressive as possible, and that's when you have to have those counter ults. What are you going to be able to do to live? Well, I'll pop Ancient Rage. I'll pop Whirlwind to make sure we can get some pressure going. Whoa. But all in all, Brutal Fissure, I like they win because they played better. Time. Yeah, I think the drafts were pretty even on both sides as well. I think it really did come down to just play there. And two rounds in a row, Brutal Fisher get their ultimates off. And, and you see why we sort of brought up that conversation about I, well, I want to be the first guy using my ults on Ice yeah. Mines, right? Because you, you win that one fight. And oftentimes, when you lay it all out on the field, even if it costs you all five of your ultimates to get that, like those two or three kills, then you've got people out of position that two kills turns into three kills, turns into four kills, turns into staggers, turns into zone, turns into the game very quickly, one after the other. But it's time for Timber Mill. Both snipers gone, Bomb King gone. Koga will take a seat as well as we look to crown our victor here in Europe PS4. Drogos might play a big impact. Willow should be a pretty big impact on this one as well. This is a very not easily defended point. Like when you're yeah. standing on this point, it probably feels the most exposed that you'll feel in the game. As a frontline, having a shield, having a wall, having something to give yourself a little bit of cover is going to be big. But being able to take that away from the other side as well, having something like a dead zone, makes it a lot easier for your team to kind of find that steamroll. Well, the Kanara combination here for Brutal Fissure on the front line. Drogos, one of the two blasters available, and not a lot of hit scan threats on the board. At this stage of the game, it's going to be double blaster for YCTG. Drogos, Willow, as well as the Furia. I like it. With no snipers on the board, I mean, yeah. it's going to be tough for Brutal Fissure to, to contest this out. I mean, this is when you can showcase how deep... This is when Shaolin comes out. <laughs> I was going to say, this is actually when you can showcase exactly how deep your champion pool is. Leon, I wouldn't mind seeing here something a little bit long range that can get that poke down and still apply some anti-heal, which is something I think you need. Although right now, YCTG with that dead zone, probably much better off, not only at anti-heal, but definitely yeah. needing it a lot more against the Anara Khan Grover. Go, we'll go eighth here. Oh, no, I'm getting trolled. 100% <laughs> I'm getting trolled. Just because I said something. And it will be Makoa Torvald here down the stretch. And now Lex. The stretchy boy. <laughs> and Brutal Fisher. So you can't, Arguably. You can't, would... you can't play games when, 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 Blake's, uh, when Blake's on the sticks in the back there. He's going to give you I would argue that this is probably my least favorite map for flanks. There's some flanks I think <laughs> can make it look good, but there's not a lot of them, right? And it has to be like the right player. Yeah. I mean, even that one G2 game when we had, like, Eevee, what was it? They had, like, Which Eevee, Buck, something. Like, they, it was all sorts of crazy. Oh, dude, I thought Blake was trolling. And if there's going <laughs> to be anyone that can do it, I think it is Buck. As long as he has a couple points in leg days. I mean, I like Andro here. I like Eevee here. 
I'm just not a fan of Buck at the moment, personally. Um, especially into a Torvald. I think any flank into Torvald, given how YCTG are probably going to play, it's going to be tough. I mean, whoever yeah. you dive on, they're getting a bubble. If Torvald's in range, you're probably getting silenced out as well, and that is incredibly difficult to deal with. For pretty much anyone except Buck, I think Buck can kind of, you know, get himself through it, but it's about being effective here in the back line. You're diving a willow, right? You're getting dead zone. Your, your healing's not doing anything here. I don't know. This one <laughs> this one could go either way. I, I like yeah. things about both drafts, and I dislike things about both drafts. I'm not a huge fan of the Buck on its own, and I think, honestly, this Torvald was taken just so that Brutal Fisher probably couldn't have it, right? I don't think this Torvald does a lot for this composition other than it won't be against you. Risk and reward, Buck, if he pops off, then it's going to be phenomenal. I think it'll be a very easy game for Brutal Fisher. If he gets shut down even once, and against Double yeah. Blaster, I think it's going to be very easy for him to get shut down. I mean, you have 100% anti-heal from Dead Zone, so your own recovery is not going to do a lot. You don't really have the damage reduction anymore. And Drogo's just hits really hard. Two rockets to the face will kill you. He sure does. So a lot of those combos, I want to say, leans in favor of YCTG. But it does come down to what we saw in the last game, execution. Can you actually pull it off? Is it going to look good? Or is it going to call you trash again? <laughs> Hopefully not. Hopefully not. You hate to see it. You hate to hear it. And I hate to do it to him. But sometimes but I, you had to do it to sometimes him. Sometimes I just had to do it to him. I get upset, you know, when I see greatness and then it fails and then it flops hard. Worm Jets hovered. Will it be the selection here at the end of the day for Ornustigan? He's sitting in base. And he's not changing loadouts here. Worm Jets for the first time. Huh. And God, what year is it? I mean, that's craziness. That's, I think, Lazy I mean, was the last guy I saw run this. And even. Like, last year, I remember seeing it, but it was, like, on the tail end. The people who weren't moving forward with it were the ones. But, I mean, look at how fast he's going around. So that is going to be able to buy him a lot. Unfortunately, it puts you in prime position to get, well, shotgunned in yep. the back. And you just saw it right there. Buck hits the big old recovery, and nothing happens. So dead zone, and very important cooldown for Buck to track this time around. Beanie hops right over the top of Khan's head. And it's just the Torvald bubble that keeps him alive. Maybe that's the combination they were looking to use here. Torvald, Makoa. I mean, Evan and I talked about it a little bit earlier. Torvald and anything, right? It gets better, right? What what don't you want an additional 2,000 HP movement speed and bonus damage on, right? Anything in the game is going to take that in stride and be like, hell yeah, let's go, baby. But at the end of the day, it's YCTG getting nothing done on the objective. Despite, again, this is their map pick. So there's, they're picking these corny-ass maps, and then they have no idea how to play them. <laughs> and, you know, going back to what you had said, for Klax here on Torvald, right? Like you said, you get a ton of damage, you get your movement speed, you get a bunch of HP added onto your bar. It all sounds great, but you have to ask, is it worth the fact that that's literally all that he's bringing to the table? Is it going to be enough to make that big difference? Silence is going to be important if you're within range right there. Sir Benji kind of feels the wrath of that. But for the most part, especially on a wide map like this, Torvald does not usually have an impact. No, most of the time when we see Torvald on Timber Mill, it's because there's an Andro, it's because there's an Eevee, yeah. it's because there's somebody that's diving ruthlessly. And again, this feels like one of those picks that's just so they couldn't have it. We don't necessarily need this. We don't necessarily even want this. It's not going to do a ton for us. I think I think Makoa Torvald is okay if you're playing it that way. Like. You and I are duo queuing Makoa Torvald. I think that's going to do work, right? I think there's a moment there. But because that Makoa has to be like the point frontliner and he can't outright just carry the game on his own on Timber Mill, I don't know. It's a bit of a combination. It's, it might be a little bit of a stretch. Ancient Rage is forced out. Kultura Scred gets the recovery off as well. Back to full HP. Buck Wild is available as well. It's just a matter of where and when he wants to pop this out. Enlightenment rips her on the backside of the fight as well. And Brutal Fisher, a dominant point capture. And now it looks like a conversion to boot. The payload, last couple of inches roll through uncontested. And it's Coulter a Scred with a double kill on Buck to finish it out. And that was a real awkward feeling, Ancient Rage, right? Like it actually comes through. You get the health yes. reset. You're ready to go. And then you just kind of wandered around with it. Maybe you got aggressive. You get back onto the payload to try and stop it from moving forward. But 
the rest of Brutal Fisher just ignore you. They say, okay, well, hey, there's a really angry turtle right there. <laughs> Let's look at anybody else, try to <laughs> kill them off, successfully do so. And yeah, you use your enlightenment, you don't get the kill, you use your whirlwind. But Brutal Fissure have shown to me, at least during the last game and so far from this game, that they don't mind expending ults if it means that they'll be able to get something. 2-0 is a good lead, and if they can control the point the same way they did last time, comeback mechanic's not even going to be a factor. Only level one items here across the board, offensive and utility included for YCTG, whereas across the board it is level two for all the selections from Budo Fisher. So not only a lead in terms of momentum, but a lead in terms of the economy of their items as well as their ultimates to boot. So Budo Fisher, everything to lose. They've got everything in their court at the moment. We'll see what they do with it. 51% on the objective though, just with more confidence, Brutal Fissure throw their Inara out onto the point. They scoop Torvald from across the way, hold him still, but it is in fact Sir Benji that holds himself still and is the target of his own aggression. Goes down, but it doesn't matter. Brutal Fissure are able to still run away with the fight at the end of the day. Capturing the point, and that is just the strengths of Inara, plus the way the team plays that. Again, look at the ults they pop. When they pop them, they're going to make sure that they all happen kind of at the same time so that they're going to be able to be get a kill, get two kills, get three kills, snowball off of it. Whereas, unfortunately, YCTG, I mean, Dragon Punch is still up at the end of the day. Hyper Beam is still up after all of that. Why did those not get popped? Why are you not looking for the kill? I think Dragon Punch did get used, like, earlier on in the round, but he recovered it fast enough that it could have made a difference. Yeah, willingness to uh, use ultimates here. Not super high for YCTG, as well as just, I don't know. Their draft is okay. It's got a couple of holes in it, but at the end of the day, it's it seems like it's coming down to just play. I think this buck is having a lot more effectiveness than it probably admittedly should. Cultura Scred has had a really good, really good game on Kinesa, and this buck play looking very, very solid as well. And just being gifted a kill here on Furia. couldn't ask for an easier snatch. What what is Furia doing that far out all by herself? You know what I mean? Enemy Locked in an awkward spot. And this is where Brutal Fissure, to me, they have to break this curse that I'm seeing from console. It's been today. It was last week as well. This 3-0 lead should turn into a 4-0. Like, if this turns 3-1, then that's bad news bears for them because every single time I've seen a team <laughs> have this much of a dominating performance for the first three points, they get it in, like, you know, six minutes, they lose this point, and then it becomes a 3-2. Then it goes 3-3. And then they end up losing. YCTG would have the favor just from a Ooh, pattern based on this. So close there. That hyper beam was almost good for two kills. Atomic does go down in the back line here. The Solar Blessing comes through, gets the full reset on Makoa. Hamana hey, you know, trying to turn up on the front line here, picking up a couple of kills, getting close to the Seismic Crash. Scred picks up Ernest again. The wall needs to go up here so close to death. Hamana Heino grabs the Earthen Guard, though. The damage reduction is just barely enough to sustain him at the moment. The Grover heal, it's good for a little while, but no longer. Willow gets back to her spot up in the air of the Fey Flight. Kultura Scred's not, even let, not ready to let this one go, though. Can Brutal Fissure wrestle this one back in their control? They're going to be able to take out the Dragon now. And Lightman comes oh, out a yeah. double kill for AMK as he gets rid of the baddies. And that should be the gas pedal right now. Get rid of this turtle, and that will be all of it. I mean, Atomic is going to be an absolute hard, monster. Got to get him down, though, before this Solar Blessing comes through. Beanie falling lower and lower. The Torvald bubble, it's good, but not good enough. Unlimited coming back onto the point. Ernest again firing up the Dragon Punch. His last ditch effort, he gets it off. Torvald dies 92% on the Enlightenment Gormizer. This is going to be up and available before we know it. Sliding in and doesn't even quite need it. Brutal Fissure with an authoritative finish, right? That is, we are yeah. pop, We are getting this done. We are popping our ultimates. We are gonna beat you here. We're gonna beat you now. They actually get a Dragon Punch off. Would you look at that? They used an ultimate there, but YCTG just, I think, too timid to take that yeah. victory today. They had some really great moments, but overall, just too timid, not assertive enough to beat Brutal Fisher. And even at the end, like, Makoa pops his Ancient Rage, right? He does literally all he can do in his power to make sure that that payload stays as far away as long as it can last while his team is respawning, regrouping, they come back in, and then it's just, like you said, there's going to be one ult that comes through, maybe a little bit of damage, but it feels as though they didn't know what to do with the time that he bought. Yeah. Well, let's head to standings, guys. That's going to do it for the European half.
of this morning's or afternoon now's console broadcast. Vex Gaming stay undefeated. Flashpoint stay undefeated. 4022224 on both sides of the coin here in Europe. PS4 and Xbox behind us. We're going to head to the schedule here. We've got North American Xbox and PS4. Onslaught versus the Happy Battle Cats. Curse These Hands versus the Vampire Lords. Elevate versus Warm Up. And the Oni Chunners versus Game Over. Ball and Barry himself will be up against the big dogs of North America. But that's later today. We're going to go on a quick little break before we head there. My name's been Pretty Hair. That's Gormizer. This was Europe. But stick around because we've got North America coming up next. <laughs> 